Hi everyone and welcome back to our animation tutorial series. In the last episode we created our character to run around and aim with their gun. And in this episode we're going to fix a couple of things and then we're going to make a sprint function so you can change the speed of the animation as well as the speed of the character itself. Okay, so to begin things we're going to fix a couple of points. So open up your player character and the first thing we're going to fix is the speed that they're walking at. Okay, so if you notice the animation speed was slightly off, um, so let's tweak it down a bit. So I'm going to go down to max walk speed on my character movement component. So click on the character movement component. And if you scroll down the right hand side in the details panel, you'll see max walk speed. It's currently 450. I'm going to change it to 200. And compile that. And that will make the speed a bit more what we're looking for. The next thing we're going to fix is our over the shoulder camera. So to start things off we just moved it to the side but we don't want to do that. We want to click on the reset the defaults if it will let me. There we go. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to change the offset. So socket offset you'll see X, Y, Z. So here I'm going to change the Y to 70 and the Z uh, actually, I'm going to increase the Z of the arm in its entirety up a little bit. I'm going to click Compile. What this means is that when we play the game, the character is always locked to that left-hand part of the screen. It doesn't uh, tear away from it at all. So, we change the speed of the character's movement, but you see the animation hasn't caught up. That's because our blend is still using the old speed values. So we're going to go into our movement blend. And in here, you see the axis for speed goes between 0 and 450. We need to change it so it goes between 0 and 200. So on the left hand side, vertical axis, 0, 450, change 450 to 200. And click save. Now if I was to test this, the animation looks a bit better. And looks a bit more like what I want to get out of my game. The other issue you'll see is that if I look backwards, my character just twists and contorts their body rather than walking towards the direction I'm walking in. So what you can do now is go back to your player character. Once into your character, we're going to click on the character movement component. Scroll all the way down until you see a section called character movement rotation settings. And in there you'll see use controller desired rotation and orient rotation to movement. Tick the orient rotation to movement. And click compile. So now when I'm facing backwards and moving, they'll move around with me. Which is a bit more realistic. Okay. So as I said, we're going to add a sprint function to our game. Uh, so first thing we need to do is create the sprint input and create the effect and then translate that effect to the animation. So let's start with the input. Head on over to the edit section and go to project settings. And in here you'll see on the left hand side inputs and our action mappings and axis mappings. Now I don't want axis mapping, I just want action mapping because it's going to be either 0 or 1 or on or off. And I'm going to change this to Sprint. On the Sprint, I'm going to choose a key. So in my case here, I'm going to use the Left Shift key. Like so. So I have to hold down Left Shift to Sprint. But you can do, obviously, whatever you like here. And when we're done there, we're going to close that down. On to your player character. So to make the character Sprint, we are going to access that Sprint key. We've got pressed and released. When it's pressed, we're going to change the character speed. And when it's released, we're going to change set it back. So I'm going to create, first of all, a variable which stores the default walking speed. So walk speed. And that's going to be a float. I'm doing this because I want to store what the original value was. So I can easily go back and forth towards it. And whilst we're here, we might as well do a run speed variable too. And click compile. So the defaults for these, 
walk speed is going to be uh, 200 and our run speed will make 450 click compile and what we're going to do is drag the character movement component out and then from this we can get or set rather set the max walk speed like so and the max walk speed for if it's pressed will be the run speed so drag run speed over and we're going to drag again from character movement set max walk speed plug it into released and put the walk speed into the set so now that should toggle between the two when we're holding down the sprint key and when we let go of the sprint key so let's test that out now the animation won't reflect it but the character should move faster okay so we've got a sprint and a walk we could turn around aiming like so okay so the next bit we're going to do is change the animation over now the animations i have i actually have some running going on here so i have run animations so go run forward like so as well as all the other directions so what we need to do is go to our blend and expand it a bit so 200 is going to be the walking speed but 450 is going to be the maximum walking speed so i need to change the speed axis value again to reflect that so i'm going to go 450 and all these values here on the graph, I'm going to drag these down like so. Okay. And these are set in 125. Um, obviously, we want 250. So let's find 250. Now on the blend mode, our current speed goes between 0 and 200 because we just changed it. We now need to change it back. So go to maximum access value and change that to 450. And now you can see the access value is now between 0 and 450. Now these values, these walking uh, points we've already got in here, we need to change these to be at set at 200 speed rather than 450, which is what they are currently. And if I drag one down, I can get to 225 because that's the halfway point, but not 250. So I need to divide 450 enough to get 250. So, no, 200, sorry. So I can divide it by 50 and get all those points. Um, or I can divide it by 9. If I divide it by 9, I get 50 intervals because 450 divided by 9 is 50. So speed 250 is there. So I can now drag all these down to 250. Like so. The next job then is to take my running animations, so my run forwards, and match it to the directions I've got already here. And I can drag my preview here, and you can see the run animation flips between the two. Like so. So now I'm going to do uh, forward left, which is here, forward right, run left, run right, and then we're going to do run backward, run backward left, run backward right, and run backward again on the side here. Now, a couple of things need to be fixed here. So some of mine I haven't fixed to be root locked. 
Okay, so I'm just going to lock the root of my character animation, and I can see which ones I need to do it. I'm looking at my backward left and backward right, and the rest look fairly okay. So it's just backward left and backward right. So to remind you how to do this, because we we did it before, go to animations, and I'm going to go backward left, and we'll go to the left hand side panel and look for force root lock and change it to anim first frame click save and we'll do it for the other one force root lock anim first frame and now if I go back to my blend I should hopefully have a much smoother animation so I go from walk in creeping up to walk and then into a blend into a run save it and close okay now we've got the blend sorted out next job is to go back into our animation blueprint and attach it to the uh, state machine we've got going on there so open up the animation blueprint and in here we're going to access the anim graph okay so I'm going to click open it up and I'm going to click on then the locomotion state machine that we've made previously and we should get back to this screen here okay so this is the state machine and then we have one state we need to add to this and that's the running state so drag from the walking over and add state I'm going to name it running and the running is going to go back from running to walking back to idle okay so we need to First of all, change the first transition rule going from walking to running. And the transition rule for this thing is going to be checking what the speed is. So rather than checking whether or not it's above zero or below uh, or equal to zero, we need to actually get it and compare it and check whether or not it's greater than 200. If it is greater than 200, that means we're sprinting. So we can go into the transition. So it'll transition this way. We then want to transition back, so we go from running to walking, and walking will mean the speed. You're going to get that. It's going to be less than or equal to. That's right, 200. And plug that into there like so. That means if the speed falls below 200, we can now enter back into our walking animation here. Open up the running state, and drag your movement blend onto it. And plug in the desired uh, variables so the direction and the speed and then click compile and that is it so let's go back to our game and push play so now I've got walking around and if I hold down the shift it'll go into my wonky running animation so it's using mixed mode animations they're not the greatest animations to use but hey oh and when I let go it goes back to our walking animation it's a bit poppy it's a bit snappy where it snaps back to idle doesn't move, make a nice smooth movement we'll fix that in the next video when we work out uh, how to change speed with acceleration and deceleration other than that thank you very much for watching and i uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and the rest of this series if you do have any comments, please leave them below. And if you want to support me, head over to Patreon and support me just like these people have. Get access to new videos uh, early, uh, exclusive videos, and join our Discord channel for chats and other things we talk about. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.